I like to create a system level diagram before I begin any design project. This step provides me an opportunity to visualize the design architecture. For this project, I have decided to create one system block for each printed circuit board. If this project were more complex, I would likely push into each block and create a hierarchical system design for each board. As you will soon see, this project is not complex, and the additional definition would be massive overkill. My main goal for the system level definition process is to think through the fabrication process with an eye on minimizing costs. Notice that the new schematic was created in the block section of the project tree, not in the design section. This action took place because we populated the design section of the DX Designer project tree when we created the new project. A schematic that is within the block section may be simulated and, if desired, may be easily moved into the design section of the project tree. There are multiple methods for updating properties on the schematic border, such as its schematic name. I have grown accustomed to using the delete border, insert border approach for updating border properties. I like this approach due to the fact that it minimizes mouse movement. Just right click on the schematic, select delete border, right click again, select insert border, done. The border properties are updated. By going through the process of adding a port, naming the port, and then routing a net from the port to the new block, the net automatically inherits the name of the port, and then the block pin automatically inherits the name from the net. It is these often overlooked features of DX Designer that dramatically improve our design creation productivity. There was a time when I would use a blank piece of paper to sketch my system level diagrams. I then advanced to using programs like Visio to create system level diagrams due to their simplicity and the rapid pictorial process. As DX Designer has evolved from release to release, I have found that not only is DX Designer as productive as these other methods, I realize significant downstream benefits from this process.
notice that when we drag an unnamed net into the block, the block pin that is automatically generated takes on the internal default name. As you will see when we rename the net, the block pin is automatically renamed as well. I trust you realize that customizing the graphics of the new block symbol is completely unnecessary. However, I process information visually and I like to use colors to reflect my design decisions so that later in the design process I do not need to rethink my decisions. Feel free to go wild. Customize the look of your system level design to reflect your creativity or use the Dave approach, some large text and custom fill colors. Once you save and close your custom edits to your block symbol in the symbol editor, the changes will be automatically reflected in DX Designer. I am not going to bore you with every step to create my system level diagram. I have shown you all of the features of DX Designer that I will use in this process. Give me a moment or two to complete the system level diagram and I will show you the result. I have finished creating the system level description. Each block defines one board in the design. The blocks that are colored in dark yellow are blocks that I have determined could be cost effectively implemented using prototype strip boards. The block in dark green is to be implemented using a custom two layer printed circuit board manufacturing process. This is the CPU board and I have need for this board in other designs so the cost will be absorbed over multiple projects. The block in orange is the LCD interface board that I purchased through the web. The cost of this board was less than the cost of the individual components. I really love surplus sales. As I worked through the system design, I annotated my blocks with additional notes to help me as I worked through the detailed design process. I was careful to add interconnect between the blocks that accurately reflect the number of connections. This was a key element in determining where to partition the design into individual boards, as minimizing board-to-board -board interconnect will be important when it's time to assemble the complete system. As you should see, the complete coil winder electronic system will be implemented using eight discrete boards. <laughs> 